So I, I I will have to say Hulu did me dirty because I turned on Raw this morning and uh, there was no Raw. So I was like, what the heck's going on? No recording, no on-demand version. So I had to go to YouTube and watch as many clips as I could on WWE's page. So all night last night after this punk promo happened, I just saw nothing but negativity. Oh, about he's, it's about the promo. It's soulless. Uh, he He's not believing anything he's saying. This isn't the punk that we, you know, we want. This is the money hungry version of punk. Whatever. I, I, I heard all of those things. So yeah. I kind of watched it. I went in to watch it with a little bit of a perspective. I was like, oh, why does everybody hate this? That's why. That's what I sort of uh, went into it with. And so I watched it and I thought, you know, this... I, I understand why people hate it, but I also think people hate it because they wanted like a pipe bomb kind of promo, right? They wanted him to sit on the stage and just let all of the last 10 years or the nine years or whatever of his frustration out on the company. And this is not what he was going to do. So the yeah. first part of the promo I found kind of funny because it is basically the Dwayne Johnson version of a promo every time he comes back to WWE. He just did this same version of the promo when they were in uh, Colorado uh, for with uh, with Pat McAfee. It's, I'm back, I'm home, thank you, everyone's been so nice to me, the crowd, you know, you people, you you fans, it was all that stuff. But the second half of the promo was... You know, it's not all sunshine and rainbows because I'm back and I'm here and people are scared of me and the people who are smiling at me, you know, they they, they may not love me still. And I got the brass ring in my. So it, it was kind of a, a tale of two promos. And I think that the first part, which was supposed to be the, you know, endearing sucking up to the fans, it was so inauthentic that the, that nobody bought the second part of it. Yeah. So yeah. that was my thought. But also, I didn't watch it live, so I didn't have this, like, oh, what is he going to talk about thing that I think a lot of people, maybe even including you, kind of wanted. You wanted to see, what does this guy have to say after nine years being gone? Yeah. Uh, I, I You kind of hit the nail on the head there, right? Because I stayed up. I watched that whole show. Uh, it was a Raw uh, that I have great difficulty watching still, even with CM Punk on it. But I, you know, when... I wasn't expecting him to start going off about Tony Khan and the Bucks or anything like that, right? I, I, I didn't feel like he was going to do that or I wanted him to do that, but I did want him to have a little bit more. Like, the, the term soulless kind of is exactly how I felt. I felt yeah. that, okay, this, this is what we're going to say. We're going to say you're back home. We're going to say that uh, you're happy to be here and everybody in the back was so great and so nice and that you're so happy to be back here. Uh, and then he went into his stuff. Here's the thing. You know, I would have loved the tell me when I'm telling lies promo. You know, the, I it, honestly, that is probably one of my favorite CM Punk promos that he's ever done. More than the pipe bomb. I know the importance of the pipe bomb, but the tell me when I'm telling lies when he did, it resonated. And it was because not so much the words, but more of him, uh, you know, the passion that he had. And there wasn't mm -hmm. any. He could also listen. He could also be nervous. He hasn't been there in 10 years. This was, you know, it wasn't what he envisioned was going to happen for sure. I don't think anybody saw this happening two years ago for him to end up back in WWE in, in, in such a catastrophic way with AEW. So obviously there's some sort of feelings there. Um, yeah. In the people that I've spoken to, you know, like. Nobody has come off to me, come up to me and said, you know what? Punk is thrilled with how this ended. <laughs> F that company. He wants to stick it to them. Like none of it. It was right, more like right. it was disbelief from everybody that they got to this point on the AEW right. side on, on, and on Punk side. So, you know, tragically, this is what happened. But now, you know, never, never say never. Can he go back in three years or five years? Would he want to? The 50-year-old CM Punk in AEW? I mean, <laughs> does that matter at all? Probably not. But now, you know, I, I'm, I'm reserving the criticism for, okay, he's obviously going to go into a program with, uh, with, with, uh, 
with Seth. Seth, the, yeah. I was going to say Steph, and that's a program <laughs> I want to see. <laughs> CM Punk and Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie McMahon, yeah. Well, she was at it. the show. She was supposedly was at she? Survivor Series. Yeah, I saw that report by somebody that she was just backstage as a guest. That that's what you know who was who was backstage yesterday. Dixie Carter. Wow, Dixie was there. The, hey man, it's good. The, I, I like yeah. I like that. I like the fact that she's still like you know, and probably that the she's not working there anymore, so it makes it easier. But I I like seeing stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, so, uh, so listen. I, I, in all, in all, to sum it up, I, I, I don't think it's fair to be like, well, this is gonna stink. I think it was just his first promo, uh, back, and we'll see where this goes. But it looks like he's on Raw. He's not gonna be on SmackDown, which I found interesting. I thought they would want to pop that SmackDown number.